Jenna, welcome to the podcast. How are you, girlfriend? Hi, Melissa. I am well. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Yeah, thank you for having me on here. So I'm a gut health expert and certified nutritionist. What that means is like I'm the real thing. I think that term gut health has been extremely overused. And let's just throw a bunch of supplements and call it a day. That's not what I do. I actually heal and reverse autoimmune and chronic illness 100% through nutrition. And I've been, I've been myself doing this for since birth, low key since birth, high key since I was about 16. So that's been almost 15 years, <laughs> almost 15 years. And I've been doing this for and healing people for almost two years now. That is amazing. That is amazing. Yes. And you did not have an easy entry into this life. No. Can you tell us no. about the beginning for you? Yeah, Melissa knows everything, guys. Yeah. A lot of people, even like when I say, yes, I have a chronic illness, a lot of people are expecting like diabetes or like type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes or something like that. I actually was born with liver dysfunction. So what that means is a lot of people are not born with liver dysfunction. A lot of things of food or environmentally that affects their liver. I was born, I actually don't know my date of birth or my exact location. I don't, don't really know that. I celebrate it April 27th, which we think is around that time. And I, we always joke around. My birthday is someday in April, maybe the first week in May. We just have that thing because we don't know why. So my mother actually, she gave birth, my biological mom, she gave birth to me and then she abandoned me after a couple of days later. The only thing that is known about my birth and my birth story is that I was very sick at birth. So I was very small. I wasn't eating and therefore I was born malnourished. And so then after that, like eating and all that was very difficult for me. And a lot of people, a lot of babies, when they're born malnourished, a lot of things happen like rickets, developmental issues, things like that. The cards were in no weird way in my favor because I got liver dysfunction, but I didn't find that out until I was, I had started recognizing things at 12, 13, 14. And then I was on my own kind of like gut health journey, realizing what I can do in my power at 16. And then I was consistent with my gut health journey starting at like 2021. So that's like at the beginning of like my birth story and what has happened. And I was actually kept a secret. Um, and so I wasn't born here. I was born in Romania. And I was kept a secret there for two years. So we actually, Melissa, there is, if you know a little bit about Eastern European history, back in the 1990s, even after the communist regime, there was a high uh, population, actually tens and thousands of kids that were actually called the lost generation. What that means is we don't have birth certificates. We don't have time. We don't have those measurements. And a lot of us are missing. Like people mm -hmm. stole us, people kept us a secret in hospitals because all the good. And that's the thing, too, is I wonder often what would happen if those nurses that saw me wouldn't have not kept me a secret. Like what would have happened? Right. And I always think of that not to get too like emotional and stuff, but this is real life. Right. And then at who they were like, yeah, we can't keep you a secret anymore. <laughs> so they gave me to an orphanage and a Romanian orphanage, if you guys also know about that, not ideal, not ideal developmentally, not ideal for hy like hygienic. I remember actually we were, I shared a crib at three years old. I shared a very small crib with someone else. And I still remember till this day and it's crazy because a lot of people are like, do you remember? And I'm like, yes, I remember because it was so bad. That's why I remember. Mm -hmm. And I remember that we would always just like pee in our, especially during the night, we would pee in those cribs and like, no one did anything about it. So that was that process. It was like the young years. And then my now parents, my adoptive parents, who are also Romanian, they adopted me when I was three. And then we came here in almost to the T, <laughs> almost to the T, because we're recording this on November 28th. 
almost to the T in 95. So, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Happy Immigration Day. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yes, yes. It's been good. It's been good. So did you have any attachment disorders? Yeah, there's so many things that go into this. Mm -hmm. So I know as a fact, there's definitely like attachment disorders and making sure that that I was good enough for anyone, for anything, because a huge part of it sounds, sounds weird, but like I'm about to say, but this is what I feel. I feel like when I was in the orphanage, there's even videos of me doing this. Where any person that came along, I was like, mama, I just wanted anybody to be my mom. And it was like that feeling of that person didn't want me. I must not be good enough. So for me, that was a huge part and still is a very big part of my identity is like to make sure that I know that I am good enough for, for myself, not for mm -hmm. others. And like really step away from that and zooming out often when we get into that cycle of, okay, yeah, college, getting into college, sports teams. I did, I was national ranking gymnast for um, almost my entire childhood. And that was a huge thing too. Like I wanted to be the best all the time. So perfectionism was like born <laughs> right there. So you could was. earn affection. Yes. And like attention and things like that, because that was not a thing. No one held us. No one held us. No one like did any of those things again developmentally the crucial the first three years of a child's life is the most crucial developmentally and my first three years were probably like developmentally not existent well so, the first three months are ultimate in forming those attachments yeah i want to just take a minute and commend you on the person you are because with that lack of attachment for that long a period I'm just truly thankful that you are here and that you are functioning and that you have love in your heart and love that you share. It just radiates from you. And I want to commend you for that. And Thank to you. say, you have my contact information. Anytime you don't feel good enough, you call me up and I will Thank remind you. you that you are. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if it's a lot of people are honestly, I, and I've said, I've told my story to numerous people and that was. Very similar to the reaction, they're like, I don't understand how you're like this. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you know what? I believe in, in, and this is how I even got to do what I do now. I believe that the body knows exactly what to do when. And I think we were created perfectly, whether that's spiritually, whether that's religiously speaking, but there definitely is a higher power that just creates us to the T and even our own journey, even our broken roads lead us exactly to where we are. There's been a couple times me being adopted was not part of my my identity. It was just like, I'm Jada. This is what I do. I'm a gymnast. That was part of my identity. Jada, I'm a gymnast. And I like to dance and I like to defy gravity. That was a huge thing about gymnastics. That's, that's why I loved it. Yeah. And, um, and a big thing of that was like when people found, oh, you're adopted, but you look like your dad. But it's definitely like possibly, possibly, because we both have this dark hair. We both have like olive skin, right? We both have like similar noses. It's interesting, right? We even have like similar eye color. It's very interesting. But again, I feel like those things are meant to be because even when we're talking about attachment, I saw my adoptive dad and there's a video of this. Like last year in October, we went because my parents live in Florida. I live in Michigan. We went to Florida with my entire family, my husband and my two kids. And my dad was like, oh, my husband's name is Katalin. Oh, Katalin, you want to see some embarrassing videos of your wife? You know, like trying to. And I was like, no. Yeah. And one of the first videos that he put on was actually when I had met my adoptive dad, when I had met my dad. And like right away, I was like, wow. And like, I literally just hung on to like his neck. And my dad was like, We're <laughs> like this one. This is Space, this right now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I think that, I think attachment goes in both ways. And I, I definitely, I kind of want to open that door here, if that's okay. I think parents also go through a lot. My parents have were together for 11 years before they even decided to adopt. And now they have, they were, they moved to a brand new country. They lived in Detroit, which was at that time super ghetto. And they lived with a bunch of uh, other like people, a bunch of like mm -hmm. other family members. And then they adopted me. They moved to a more suburban area, Sterling Heights. If anybody from Michigan listens, we were living in Sterling Heights. And I think that was 
slightly different because my mom was a stay-at-home mom. My dad worked very long hours all the time, Sunday through Sunday, since I can remember. And I think that was very difficult on my mom because that was not something that she was used to. Now she has a child who, you know, is definitely needy. Definitely like I want attention. I want love. I want this. I want that. There's a lot of things that needed to be met. And I think my mom, just as a whole person, again, no parent is perfect. No human is perfect. Mm -hmm. We all make mistakes. I just feel like my mom was just missing that emotional attachment because she's, what do you mean? Like, you're three years old. You know why? Like, why do you need these things? And so on and so forth. Again, absolutely not at all that she did like a terrible job or not at all. A lot of how I've become and who I am is because of my parents. But yeah, there's definitely, I think, both sides of the story that makes it quite difficult. For sure. Now, I do have to ask, I'm very curious. When you were 12, you said you began noticing signs of liver dysfunction. What yeah. would that look like? I don't know yeah, if a so, 12-year-old, I'd be able to identify anything like that. So at 12 years old, I was not maybe not at the peak of my gymnastics career, but I was I was very good. And I had 12% body fat and I had a lot of cramps. I had severe acne. I did not have energy. Like when I would go to a competition, I couldn't watch TV. I couldn't play with the other kids. I couldn't do anything before a competition because I just felt like the extreme fatigue, like not exhaustion. This is like fatigue where I feel like my bones, my shoulders were heavy. Like I felt that. And then something weird that, again, my parents noticed, like, I literally ate Melissa like a grown man and I was very skinny. And a lot of people were like, it's because she did five hours of gymnastics and then she went to school and then again, or she's been doing this for years. And my mom was like, I don't know. Because like when I say she eats a lot, guys, she eats a lot. Like we would go to a restaurant and I would order like steak, potatoes, rice, veggies, and I would eat it all in one sitting. And I'd be like, two hours later, I'm like, I'm hungry. My mom, what? Like, <laughs> so, like, so at 12 years old, I was like, there's definitely something going on. Because I'm looking at other kids, how they are. I'm looking at my other gymnastics sisters, as we call each other. I'm looking at them and they're just not having the same issues in life. And I'm like, why am I having these issues? What is going on with me? At 13 and 14, I was having again, severe cramps. Then we had sleeping problems and I had, so I would be like wrapped up. And then like during the night, very often, I don't know what to tell you. If my mom was here, she could tell you because we actually did this whole thing where we wanted to see how many times that happened. And I would like open my eyes. You know how newborns, they open their eyes and they like spaz out and then they like go back to sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's like normal for newborns, not at 13, 14 years old. And mm -hmm. I was doing this and it was like so aggressive that when me and my mom did this, like my mom was like, I want to like sleep next to you and see what happens. And I did this one night and my mom had like bruises like everywhere like this because I was so like, oh my goodness, like that. Yeah. Was, okay, we need to do some sleep test. We need to do some nutrient test. We need to do some of this. We need to do some of that. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And mind you, my parents knew when they had adopted me, they got the papers like, there is something wrong with this child. We don't know what. And they even told my parents that it could be hepatitis B. And so mm -hmm. my parents knew that there was something wrong. They just, so maybe that too, you know when something is wrong with your child, but they don't, you don't have a tangible thing. So then when your child is not acting very childlike, right? Mm -hmm. Want to be a little bit more attentive, right? And so that's what was happening. And then 14, 15 years, I, at, I, 15 years old, gymnastics, I had severe joint pain. I had my right shoulder dislocated. I had water in my knee. I had all these things going on, including the sleep, the acne, the cramping, the all this stuff. And oh so my goodness. Was, yeah. Yeah. So my parents were like, something's going on. Like, we don't know what something's going on. Let's go do testing. So we did a bunch of tests and it wasn't until I was 16 going on 17 Oh, and I also got extremely late period. I was actually 16 when I got my first period. But again, makes sense, right? And like I had a lot of people would write that off to gymnastics. Yep, exactly. It was like read my mind. And, and so it was 16, 17. I bled an entire year having a, a menstrual cycle the entire year. Gosh. And I was anemic. And then I was put on birth control pills. And then my mom was like, that's it. 
nothing. And mind you, we did so many labs and everything is fine. Everything is normal. And my mom was like, that's it. Like, we need to do something else. We need to find something else. And I researched a bunch of stuff because like my parents are a little bit old. Parents at that time, like internet was just becoming big, like that kind of stuff. So I was like, don't worry. I got this. <laughs> so I started doing some oh, research. those interwebs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how it was. Especially my parents lived in Romania their entire life. They At that time, they lived in Romania half of their life. And then they just started a brand new life here. You know what I mean? It's a brand new world for them, too. So they're like, yeah, <clears throat> we need to do some research. I'm like, okay, I got this. And there was a few tests that I had learned about. And it was 17 turning 18 because that was a whole year of like from 16 to 17. I was like, I don't know what's going on. I also quit gymnastics because I was like this. I need to figure this out. I need to figure my life out. I, I don't know what's going on with me, but I'm not after like emergency visits, ambulance. I was like, this is not OK. I'm so young. I don't know what's going on. So 17 turning 18, I had a CCK test done. CCK is a chemical that is like through IV and that measures how well your natural detox system, so your liver, your gallbladder, your bile, your kidneys, how well do they function? And I did that test and at three hours, so at like hour one, nothing is really supposed to happen. And by hour three, you're supposed to have the entire CCK flushed out of your body. And at one and a half hours, the CCK was completely flushed out. And the nurse, it wasn't even, it wasn't even the, the radiologist that was doing this. It was a nurse and she said, this is not okay. And so I was like, okay, I didn't do anything. Like, what, you know, how are getting you close? Know? Yeah. yeah. I was like, come on. She's like, yeah, there's definitely some liver dysfunction. I was like, oh yeah, my liver doesn't function well. She's like, no, like your liver functions 50% of its capacity. Mm. And I was like, I'm so young for this. I have no idea how I'm going to do my life. And right away, she was like, yeah, we're going to do a pills. We're going to do like a whole therapy of like pills, steroids, things like that. And I was like, no, right away, right away. And my mom was with me when I did the CCK test. And I told my mom like what was happening because they were, she wasn't allowed. You do like a barium test too. Like you do so much. I was there for the whole day. My mom was there and I told her the final verdict, if you will. And she's okay. So let's just go home and let's try to figure this out. And but again, the blind side of this is that my parents paid so much money for gymnastics and they were like, we can't pay for school. So I was going to university. I got accepted at Wayne State University at the time. And now I'm on this brand new journey of health and gut health journey. I'm like, yeah, we can't pay for that. I'm like, OK, I'll find a way to do it. No worries. And I got twenty three thousand dollars in debt and even more with school, 23,000 in debt was just from labs and trying to figure out what was wrong with me and with school even more. And that was truly when I was like, okay, like I definitely want to heal through nutrition. I really want to learn how to do this. And here we are about, about 11 years later, almost 12 years later. And your health is much better. So much better. So much better. To be very honest, Melissa, I don't think I, I would be here. So at 18, because you have like your final pedi pediatrician visit, that pediatrician was like, yes, we heard she has liver dysfunction. And they were telling my mom, they didn't tell me this. They told my mom, who later my mom told me by 30, I'd be on dialysis. And by 40, I wouldn't be doing too hot. And I'm 30 now and I'm nowhere near dialysis. So. Excellent news. Yes. No, I was a biologist when I started out. That was what my degree was in. I was a lab rat. I loved the field. Our body creates 300 million plus new cells every hour. Yes. And if we yes. have what we need, the fuel that we need, those cells can replenish and rebuild and heal. So yes. I love connecting with people that have that practice, that do that in their life and to teach the rest of us how to incorporate it into our own. That's awesome. That is amazing. And like the world needs more of that. It's just that reminder, too, is that man, this body is created so perfectly. Yeah, I have a low functioning thyroid and I am working with a functional medicine chiropractor to help that thyroid get back to normal function again. Yeah, and we have every expectation that it will. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And chiropractors are great, too. My my daughter, when she was born, 
this is just a fun fact, but when my daughter was born, she was born C-section and she had the gunk in her throat still, right? Because of that, it caused, because she wasn't able to lay down all the way, she had to, she had to get a couple adjustments. By the third adjustment, Melissa, everything was fine. She was able to sleep through the night. She was like, yeah, we're a fan of chiropractors here, of course. Yeah. <laughs> So, Jetta, what message do you want people to know about nutrition and their bodies and their health? I don't know if it's just one message. What I can say is that self-advocate for yourself. This is a very big thing. Again, going back to my own parents. No, they are not perfect. Again, absolutely not. But they definitely helped me with that. They were like, figure it out. You, like you can. You speak the language. You can do all these things self-advocate for yourself and ask a lot of questions and stay curious. So that's what I did. That's what got me to where I am now. A lot of people argue that like I, I got healthy because of my education. So yes, I did study the gut brain connection for four years. Yes, I studied gut development for four years. Yes, I did. But I went into it for myself, actually. I went to university because I was like, now that I know this, I need to know this. I feel like too, not everything that we do in life, we have to get something out of it. We can totally do classes. We can totally do a schooling to figure out ourselves. And, and that's what I did. And I was like, I love this stuff. I originally also wanted to be a brain surgeon. And then I got into this and I was like, this stuff is so cool. I love the neurology part. I love the gut part. I love the biology part. And yeah, <laughs> excuse me. So that was like that. So self-advocacy, really staying curious and really not taking no for an answer. So it, when that nurse was like, we're going to put you on steroids, and we're going to put you on some treatments or pills and things like that. My mind right away was like, if I have liver dysfunction, how are you giving me? I'm confused, mm -hmm. which to her reality, I'm sure she didn't mean harm. But again, there are pills out there that help liver recreation. There are pills for a, a bunch of things now. But to me, it just didn't make sense. If this is what's happening, why would I do that? So I just I stayed that course. I stayed that thought because that was initially what I felt here. Like, what? That makes no sense. You make no sense. Okay, thank you for this result. At least I have a result. And we're going to move on from here. And really understand that the people around you, your environment, your job, and in intake, and by intake, it's not just nutrition. The health and wellness really is everything. I have, or I had someone who was like, I'm doing everything correct. I, I'm following your food guide to the T and I'm just not feeling better. And I'm like, because it's also your job that you don't like. It's the people around you. It's the things going on in her household that are not ideal and very traumatizing, things like that. And that's, it, it takes itty bitty steps and maybe being mindful. I think that's a great, great point to, to start at is being mindful. Am I watching the news every single day? And I'm, am I getting anxiety from how terrible this world is? Yes, the world is terrible, but there's also great things happening every single day. And again, that's just reality, right? Again, the same people around us. As I was in my own gut health journey, I saw a lot of people that were like, oh, come out with us. Oh, like for drinks. And I'm like, I will die. <laughs> Let's die. Please understand this. This is just not me. And I'm a person. I like to go out and dance. I'm not really a, like a big alcohol drinker in general, but this was very pressure to go out and drink. And when I started saying no, it was like the friendship was gone too. I was like, interesting. And, and I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that. This is why I feel like God health even saved my life. I was in a terrible relationship. Had to do a lot with attachment, with my attachment issues that I had growing up. I was in a terrible relationship. That man is gone. That was a grieving phase that I went through. Things like that just, thank God that I'm able and capable to be mindful. I'm able to say, okay, you know, what have I done today that made me that 1% better? Yeah, and that's it. It's it, We don't have to do the all or nothing. We don't have to do, <laughs> excuse me. We don't have to do all or nothing. We don't have to be, I'm going to do a thousand steps when your body is not even used to doing 300 steps. So very small, but significant habits. That's great advice. So how do we connect with you to learn more? Yeah, there's a lot of ways, actually. I think the best way is through Instagram. So I have an Instagram, it's juttas.digest. And then 
You can add me on there. I have a, a bunch of highlights speaking about what I do, client results, my own gut health journey, a little bit more deeper info on even my personal story and things like that. So what we talked about here, Melissa, is really just like the tip of the iceberg. So I go pretty I dive deep on my Instagram page. And then also I have a Facebook group page, Jetta's Gut Health. So G-E-T-A apostrophe S Gut Health. If you type that in, it'll be the first one that pops up. On there, I do free trainings and interviews with past clients and even just updates and like nutrition, label health. Today, someone put like a side-by-side -side comparison between two Heinz ketchup. When we talked about it, there was like 15 people involved in the conversation. It was amazing. It was amazing. So it's really a community. It's not really where like, it's just me talking or things like that. I really want to really get value even from just the free stuff that I do because to me, it's like, I, I need help. I need help. And this was for me too. I needed help. And there at that time, no one was doing anything like that. That's why I got $23,000 in debt because I was paying for every single thing that I was doing, every move that I was making. And so I was like, yeah, I definitely want to offer these things. So yeah, it's more of a community, more of, hey, what do you think about this? Who here has info about this? Things like that. And then I also have, for those with no social media, I actually have a community chat. Again, we're big on community, where it's the first Thursday of every month. So actually this Thursday, December 1st, we'll have a community chat and it's on Zoom. And you just sign up for it. You get an email, the reminder, and then the Zoom link. Um, and we just sat, sit and chat 60 minutes of hot takes. One of the last, like actually what, what started the community chat was the Facebook group. And someone asked if we can do a chat, a live chat about why, why Bill Gates owned like 20,000 farms. And I was like, yes, let's do it. And it was just like a chat. It wasn't really like a training. It was just a chat and I loved it. And so... The last one that we did was inner child. Is that a term? Is that just a buzzword? You're talking about that. This week, we're going to talk about research and how to identify the correct research and does it pertain to you? So that's just Judda's Health community chat on Zoom. So if you're listening to this podcast, those links will, are available in the show notes to find Jetta on Instagram and in the Facebook group and on the community Zoom chat. Just click the links and you'll have the information you need to connect. If you are out there and you are suffering from an autoimmune disorder, if you feel something is not right in your body and you're not being listened to, if you're wondering if there's something more out there, there is. Connect with Jetta and learn how to go further in your health and the next steps that are necessary. Yeah. Jetta, thank, thank you so much for joining thank us you. today. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. This was a beautiful conversation. Thank you.